Salvation is not going to heaven after death. The words saved and heaven never appear together in the Bible. Surprising, perhaps, to some. Salvation means restoration to wholeness here and now. This is not a something you get after you die, which is what has been promoted. You get promoted to heaven. You cross the Jordan into the by and by. That is a religious system, which is a wrong, but it's a tradition that a lot of people believe. Salvation is now, here and now, bringing us into wholeness, into the true identity of who we are. If you are indoctrinated with the idea that your salvation depends on you to any degree, then you will never grow beyond trying to secure your salvation. And that is where I've come from in my journey, coming from an evangelical background. It was that my salvation depended on my ability to trust God or my faith in God or what I did in asking God to come into me. Not just coming to a realization of what had already been done, but an ongoing work to continually to be good enough and acceptable to God by being a good Christian, reading my Bible, praying every day, witnessing all the things that we're supposed to do. Well, who said we're supposed to do them? Well, Jesus didn't, but church has, and therefore we can be conditioned and indoctrinated by those things. And deconstruction is the process that removes that indoctrination and replaces that indoctrination with, lie, with the lies that we believe, with the truth, which now renews and transforms our mind. If someone does not believe that they are saved, they still are. However, they just don't believe it yet. That is the truth. We are all included in what the Father already did in Jesus to forgive, redeem and reconcile us to himself. He has done and completed that work and it's finished and all have been declared righteous and justified and forgiven. That is the truth. You may not believe that truth and many don't believe that truth, but just because someone doesn't believe it's true doesn't make it false. They just don't believe in that truth. It is the truth. So the new covenant was made between the father and the son, and it included all of humanity. Teaching that we must make a free will decision to be included is a church invented heresy. That's another Don Keithley quote. You know, now you know me, I'm not really provocative, but I am quoting these things because some people do need a, sh a shake to get them out of the thing that they're in. So all in humanity is included. Our free will decision is to accept what has already happened, that we're already included, not to make it happen. This is an excerpt from Mike's current teaching series, Restoring First Love. Get the full-length videos every month, only at eg.freedomark.org slash first dash love. If Jesus had a seat at the table and included the doubter, the denier, so we've got Thomas, Peter, and a traitor, Judas, then I doubt seriously if anyone is excluded today. So no one is excluded from what Jesus came to do and to finish as he came to take away the sin, the sin, the lost identity of the world. Not just a few people, but the whole of the world and the all people. So what we believe about God does not define him. Our doctrines do not even define us, even though they may label us. And of course, most of us have been labeled by what we believe. We may have been labelled Baptist, we may have been labeled charismatic, Pentecostal, faith, all sorts, Anglican, you know, brethren for me, Methodist. We may have had a label based on the doctrines of the stream that we were in. What God knows to be true about us, demonstrated in Christ alone, defines us. Agree with God about you. Jesus is what God believes about you. Again, Francoise de Toit quote, Jesus is what God believes about you. So what we see in the son is what God believes about us as sons. And the love that God has as father for his son, Jesus, is the same love that he has for us. So when we come to be reconciled to God, that God was in Christ reconciling 
the world to himself, that word world is cosmos, in reconciliation, it was an accounting term that you reconcile the debit and the credit and they have to be equal and balanced. So the value that you are to God is the same value that Jesus is. And therefore, God values Jesus and Jesus is God. So we have the same value as God has for himself. That's a powerful statement that we need to embrace and grasp because we are of equal value as how God sees Jesus and as himself. Adam didn't change the nature of Father God. Adam changed. Why did Adam change? Because he chose a path that was independent in relationship from God. And he chose that he had to do things in his own strength and ability. Father God did not change. Father still wants the walk in the garden with you. He still wants that walk. He still wants to have a relationship. He wants us to see that we can be restored to that relationship. That was a quote from Luke Agee. Now, deconstruction happens in many ways. Two ways that can be observed is people rejecting the conditional love of religion. And many, many people are walking away from organized religion. And those who find unconditional love outside of religion, God is love. And that is really, really important. But God does not deconstruct us by focusing on the lies that we believe but by helping us know the truth that sets us free by renewing our mind to that truth. So God is not wanting to challenge what you believe in a negative sense. He wants you to know what the truth is so that those belief systems just fall away because we no longer can believe them when we've experienced the real truth. The truth that we know by experience will set us free. So let's focus on the positive solution not on the negative problem. So don't try and renew your mind or deconstruct your beliefs because you'll just be doing it with the same thing that holds your beliefs. Let God encounter you in such a way that it changes what you believe and you have a total testimony that is based in the truth that you have experienced, not a belief system that you're trying to believe. Another Francoise de Toit quote, while all of creation is waiting and longing for the unveiling of the sons of God, Many Christians are waiting for the second coming of Jesus. And as I've covered before, the second coming of Jesus has already happened in related to what happened in AD 70. Therefore, so many Christians are looking for the wrong thing. And creation doesn't recognize Christians who are waiting to be rescued. Creation recognized sons who are looking to outwork the truth. Religion ingrained us deeply to the fear to fear the future, fearing the tribulation, fearing the trouble that's coming, fearing the rapture and when it will happen, fearing, fearing the future. We should not fear the future. The spirit of truth was given that we as sons and daughters should shape the future. Selah, another Don Keithley quote, let's make sure that we're not afraid because you'll hear all sorts of things, wars and rumors of wars, fear based things. Fear of what's going on in the Middle East. Fear never, ever comes from God. And perfect love casts out fear. So let's make sure that we're not operating out of fear and we're not living in the blessing and provision of today because we're afraid of what's going to happen tomorrow. There is no great tribulation coming. There may be tribulations that we go through, but God is with us through those tribulations. But there is no biblical great tribulation Armageddon, war in the Middle East in the sense of the end of the world. This was the end of the old age, the age of the old covenant, which has already ended. If you enjoy these videos, would you please take a moment to like, comment and subscribe? It really does help. Thank you very much.